visualize yourself getting on a plane, right? Whether it's a business trip, family vacation, you name it, it doesn't matter, right? Think about yourself getting on a plane. And then what happens is, as you're getting onto the plane, you see, as always, people in their seats, right? And every single person on that plane, almost all of them, let's say, has a child with them. And you, you, you just say to yourself, my gosh, maybe there's some type of you know, program where a bunch of people are, are going on a plane for a trip of some type or something because it's not that often you see tons of babies on a plane, right? Now, I don't want you to focus on the baby part, but the point here is this. Think about then you're landing, you get off the plane, and you kind of think that was a weird experience, right? All of them kind of seemed in synchronicity with one another and things like this. You get off the plane, and then as you're leaving the plane, you then see footage from 1958 of a certain person from the Air Force that's talking about UFOs, and you think, why is this even playing, right? You Imagine you have no interest in UFOs whatsoever, right? Anything of the sort. And then you kind of just brush it all off. Then as you return back from your business trip vacation, however many days or weeks later, right? You're going onto the plane and you see the exact same people, all of them in a very zombie-like robotic type manner with the babies in their laps as well too. But the babies seem to have grown many, many years, three to five years within a matter of weeks. And you're like, how the hell is that possible? You ask one of the people on that plane, you say, excuse me, ma'am or sir. May I ask, is there some type of parent program of sorts going on here? One of them just looks at you and their eyes turn completely black. Literally the entire part of the eyeball goes black and you just sit in your seat and you're on your way. And then all of a sudden, one of the screens on the, the, the seat of the plane where you can watch movies starts showing just your seat some footage of a gentleman by the name of Donald Kehoe from 1958 on CBS television. Now, that might not make any sense to you guys right now, but I promise you it'll come full circle. Now, before I do that, I just want to give a few shout outs. I know there's a ton of you that want to be shouted out. I haven't missed out on any of them. I just need you guys to give me a little bit more time throughout this week to, to carry on with them. So first off, I'd like to give a shout out to The Thunder Alchemist, as well as SVMGN. Thank you so much, my friend, for watching the show, as well as Dojo. So again, thank you. Now, the title of today's episode is Project Nemesis, the quantum tribunals that infuse sacred exoskeletal remains now that might sound like it's all over the place and what have you but we're literally going to break it down step by step so the first thing you might ask is you might say okay dave what the hell does nemesis even stand for right now when we take a look at a lot of the different things of what it could stand for we could just say you know it could mean this it could mean that a bunch of words that the military uses and we'll never know what it stands for according to the drive.com is netted emulation of multi-element signatures against integrated sensors which is the acronym for nemesis now to translate that basically guys what that means is a little bit of some technology and part of my English, a bunch of bullshit, basically saying we're not going to tell you what this is specifically, right? Now, if you look at the article of what the drive.com explains, which they're technically considered mainstream, but they do a good job of explaining the back end of some apparatuses in some cases, you'll find that they explain things fairly well, but not as good as it could be elaborated on right now. The first thing I want to jump into is I want to mention that if you're part of Patreon, our Patreon uh, members only packages, you'll know what quantum tribunals are. So quantum tribunals, very quickly are basically when certain people extraterrestrials are placed around the world and are emitting certain elements that need to be in order for a certain energy to line up to extract energy from preferably younger humans now this is not a child trafficking episode or anything like this i want to make that very very clear with that being said though the best example i could probably give is the second transformers film where if you guys can remember they have to have all the um with shia labeouf where they got i think it was the second or the third one where they have all the pillars placed around the earth to activate a portal think of that that's probably the best concept of a quantum tribunal right now the first thing i want to jump into is that you might say dave why are these beings taking planes to go all over the world and things like this for these tribunals? Well, if we take a look here at this particular Roswell wreckage update, this is according to Tro bridgeplanetearth.com what we're going to find here is we're going to find some of the metal extracted and reverse engineered allegedly we don't know if that was successful or not i would dare to say that it was but if we see here we're going to find that this particular metal 
actually has certain glyphics that have been deciphered into a form of translational value. So essentially, it basically gives the details and instructions for a quantum tribunal to occur. Now, with that being said, what we also have to look at here too is we have to look at something that also came with the initial Roswell craft. Now, this is not a Roswell episode, but I want to make this very clear. Take a look at this picture here, guys. And unfortunately, I can't tell you how I got a hold of this, but this little metal here emits droplets. All right, it emits droplets at 322 hertz frequencies, and on top of that, each piece of this small metal, because there are multiple pieces of this, also have 322 droplets, so I need you to keep that in mind, the number 322. Now, this particular type of Roswell metal that I'm also showing here also entails believe it or not, a symbolism that describes the exoskeletal structure needed after these droplets are placed. Now, you might say, Dave, how could one form of language mean so many things? Well, if you go back and watch our Project Carrot episode, I know I reference that a lot, but it really is significant in putting the pieces together here. It's a great piece of, uh, of document uh, documentation to, to look at. You'll find that certain languages and symbolisms can actually represent multiple different meanings at once. All right. And so when we take a step back and we look at this, what we're going to find is that these exoskeletal structures are, in fact, used with the small piece of metal that is dropped, believe it or not, onto preferably younger humans. I do. I, I will say children, but not in the way in which we may think of, you know, rituals or sacrifices. But when these extraterrestrials bring these children and by the way, if you haven't figured it out by now, those people on the plane were, in fact, extraterrestrials. We can say Nordics, Venusians, you name it, right? Uh, reptilians, camouflage. That's not even even the point. The point here, though, is that they take these children into certain geographic locations of the Earth that align with the Orion lines as well as the Nazca lines. I mean, you could argue they're one and the same, but it also aligns with the universal ones, Walter Russell's energetic frequency grid that we can also say describes other interdimensional beings and gateways through the Andromedan Council. But that that's also something that we have to put aside for a second. They take these droplets and drop them onto the children because as the children grow, the children then become impregnated with another extraterrestrial being within them. Now, you might say, Dave, do you have any evidence? Do you have any proof, anything to substantiate this? Absolutely. Let's take a look here at this picture right here. This was uh, actually found, I can't say, unfortunately, but this was a fetus that was immediately, once discovered, immediately this person was taken to a deep underground military base and this woman was very sadly allegedly slaughtered because of what she had inside of her when humans found out about this program they didn't know that the children were being were growing so quickly in order to be impregnated the hu the US government the human side of things they had assumed that these children were being impregnated based on this metallic droplet of 322 hertz in order to be taken to another planet of theirs or what have you because these children were in fact grown for these aliens by humans within the deep underground military base labs now what's interesting about this too is that this is a form of i guess we could say betrayal amongst humans and what have you now after this happened in 1958 a gentleman by the name of donald kehoe went on to cbs believe it or not he went on to cbs to discuss his i guess we could say what he found to be the case with regards to extraterrestrials and what have you. And when he went there, what he found was this. Now, first off, let's just say very quickly, he was a Marine Corps uh, naval aviator. All right. And he went on to CBS. And what happened was that he was given a script that he had to stick to to talk about how he had to disprove a lot of UFO sightings. He then at the very last minute, while he was on set at CBS, he goes, you know what? I'm not sticking to the script. And they said, no, Donald, we can't. But then within a matter of seconds, they were going live. This was a time when, you know, the technology and software wasn't nearly as advanced right so they didn't have the the 30 or 60 second delays if they wanted to put that on and things like this but the point was that the second he started going off script and describing something about what extraterrestrials were doing to younger children he the sound got cut off immediately the sound got cut off and then all of a sudden an announcer on cbs said we apologize we're having technical difficulties and things like this now the reason why i bring this up is because the metal bar from roswell is essentially what gave donald kehoe the the I guess we could say the jitters. He was very scared, right? With that being said, what he also found to be the case was that he was trying to describe that particular metal that had droplets on them that they found from Roswell. But the reason why he couldn't was because that led to a phase three DARPA program. Now, a phase three DARPA program is something extremely hard to discover, I do have to say. But when we take a look at all of it, what we're going to find is that led to a particular um, operation. A particular operation that was named 
Project Bando, which then led to Project Nomad. Now, if you look up what Project Nomad is, it's a fantastic PSYOP cover because it's literally a foundation and it's also considered a video game. Now, I do want to say that just because it's the name Project Nomad doesn't mean no other company or industry or business in the world could use it. But the point is that it works as a fantastic cover. Now, Donald Kehoe also worked at NICAP, which is what gave him such you know validation. NICAP was the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon. Now, it, st it was founded in 1956, and it was then later defunct or, you know, uh, disassembled in 1980. So if there's nothing to look into, why did it go for that long? Over 20 years it went for. And you're telling me if there were really sound issues, Donald Kehoe couldn't go back on CBS the following day or week or what have you? and describe what he had to say? No, because it was a cover-up. Now, here's the thing, too, I want to mention in terms of the psychological warfare aspect of all of this. What we have to look at here is we have to understand that the concept in which there's an implicative bias towards saying, oh, if you disclose aliens to the country, you're betraying your country. How are you betraying your country? And I think those who have served in the military can understand this the best. And if I am wrong, please tell me, but how can you betray your country if the country themselves, the people of that respective country, don't even know that whatever you're trying to disclose exists. So how would you betray your country? But that's what they do. There's an implicative bias to even remotely thinking about disclosing it, which is what they tried to do to Donald Kehoe. There's an underlying contempt in the concept of even slightly, at the most minimal extent, formalizing an idea about it or behind it. And this is actually a more direct form of propaganda. And what's scary about that, believe it or not, guys, is that I need you to very respectfully listen to this very closely. The more direct, and this has been factually proven by many different studies, off, based off of history of many years, the more of many different cultures and people. So this doesn't just apply to the West, but the more direct propaganda is, whether that's in a school system or literally just the way that people implicitly tell you things like the example I gave of, you know, how NASA, when they get submitted photos of UFOs, they don't really answer the question. They just kind of say, well, do you see anything there? That type of form of propaganda, the more direct it gets, the more easier it is to indoctrinate the people that will then fall for this misinformation if you you will right now you could argue dave are you spreading uh, you know some form of misinformation and look we got to play devil's advocate the only thing i can tell you here is that you have to decide for yourself how much do you feel indoctrinated when you're out in the world going about your day and how much do you feel when you're analyzing content like this that's the thing i can tell you i'm not here to convince you you know uh, what you should believe or what you should not believe or subscribe to it's a matter of providing the evidence now the next thing i also want to take a look at here is something that is called the suicide machine now according to ifiscience.com the suicide machine that lets you experience death is now available for the public to try. Now, it's not necessarily about this machine. It, it just kind of makes you feel like all like um, um, very out of breath and nauseous and things like this. But excuse me, just had a sip of water. The point here is this. The person who created this machine or developed it, his name is Doc, Dr. Philip Nitschke, nicknamed Dr. Death. He announced, and I quote, announced his plans to debut his latest suicide assisting machine named Sarko, end quote, which is short form for sarcophagus. Guess which board he sits on allegedly. He allegedly sits on the board, Dr. Philip Nitschke, nicknamed Dr. Death. I mean, see how they just throw it right in your face? He allegedly sits on the board of EG&G. Now, try searching up EG&G, not just with Google, try any other search engine, even try that other thing I can't really say on here, that gray area. You're not going to find much, right? And this is the part that he advised on with the phase three DARPA program that I was talking about that also connects to Project Bando and many other things. Now, if we take a look at Project Bando, what are we going to find here? The best thing I could find, guys, on exoapedia.org was that Take a look at this. Look at how vague this is. Project Bando was established in 1949 and has to do with studying the alien bodies and survivors that were found at sites where UFOs had crashed. More specifically, it dealt with collecting and evaluating the biological information obtained from alien beings, either survivors or the bodies. It was said that they were examined to determine evolutionary information for medical researchers. End quote. Which one of those medical researchers was that? Guess who it was? Dr. Death? His father? 
father also co coincidentally was part of this project Bando as well, which is extremely interesting because when we take a step back and we look at all of it, we're going to find that you see how not necessarily that this doctor, I'm not trying to defame him, but you, you notice how they're not necessarily part of the elites, but they're related to people who have access to those higher echelon levels of these types of, uh, these types of things, right? Now, the final thing I want to take a look at, or one of the final things, is that I want to reference this article from SciTechDaily.com, which is in theory considered to be pretty mainstream, which says... 2D hetero structures rolled like sushi may lead to ultra miniaturized electronics, end quote. Now, what we're going to find here is that when we look at certain hetero structures, there's a very real possibility that if you layer two dimensional apparatuses or formations or materials, you can actually create something that grows at an accelerated rate. What is that? In what case could we relate this to? Oh, that's right. The additive synthesis of the metal that was found on the Roswell crash. Right. And on top of all that, Donald Kehoe tried to disclose. Right. But on top of all of this, if we take a look at Wikipedia, let's just take a look at this very quickly, because this makes perfect sense. The additive synthesis, and I quote, is a sound synthesis technique that creates timber by adding sine waves together. Now, take a look at this, guys. The timber of musical instruments considered in uh, can be considered in the light of Fourier theory to consist of multiple harmonic or inharmonic partials or overtones each partial is a sine wave of different frequency and amplitude that swells and decays over time due to modulation from an ADSR envelope or low frequency oscillator end quote low frequency oscillators for those who are more into the paranormal side of things you'll know that low frequency oscillators are in fact used to detect certain paranormal spirits and anomalies that cannot be explained energetically even scientifically on the public level but the thing I want to point out here is take a look at the frequency that it seems to emit when it gives off this harmonic apparatus now yes generally this is used for music but the point is that music and sound are frequencies right so in theory what's the difference so you're seeing that connection there but on top of all that guess what frequency it emits 322 hertz do you think it's a coincidence that 322 droplets per metallic um i guess we could say bottle or tube if you will or whatever we can call this shape if uh, of droplets is emits 322 hertz and on top of all that can only emit 322 droplets per uh, per piece i don't think it's a coincidence i don't have the answer guys but what i'm finding is that the 322 hertz gives of some type of growth or formation to these type of children that tend to generally be younger and i dare to argue it has to do with an energetic aspect that then give pregnancy to these extraterrestrials or hybrids if you will now i don't know to what extent the u.s government or other world governments understand this but what i do know is this Every single time there are reports of this occurring, all right, the lake of skeletons in India increases more and more, but no one ever sees the skeletons being thrown in, right? So I don't understand. And the studies have been done to show that more and more skeleton remains are, they, they word it as being found, but in reality, what's happening is they're being added by who? I don't know. Now, maybe there is no connection whatsoever. But every time a report like this surfaces, what we're going to find is that this, in fact, does occur. And on top of all that, if this energy can manifest physically, it then manifests rapidly and a ritual must occur right away, according to what Donald Kehoe had said as well. What does he mean by that? Here's the thing. By then, he was cut out on the sound on CBS. And keep in mind, guys, this was back in 1958. This was when TV was just getting going and, you know, radio was still a big thing and all that. But at the end of the day, the one final connection that I, I want to make here as well is that Linda Moulton Howe has also said that her sources have told her. Now, again, whether or not we can believe this, we have to be we have to be vigilant, but we got to look at all the angles of consistency, excuse me, consistency. She says that if and this is consistent with the Lacerta files as well, she says that that metallic apparatus that emits these droplets are were also used to create dinosaurs. And she said, again, having to do with the consistency of Earth being a breeding ground or a sort of um, a, a jail, if you will, up, up until 30,000 years ago, if uh, according to the Lacerta files and many others that one extraterrestrial species in fact created the dinosaurs and for a short period of time relative to earth earth's overall existence use the dinosaurs as a form of a biological weapon but i bring this up because guess what frequency some dinosaur bones admit 
322 hertz so that's all i have for today we will catch you later on today for the members only episode and for all members i encourage you to please watch this first before jumping into the patreon episode because there's a lot of intersecting uh, factoids here so thank you so much guys and we'll catch you later cheers